What's up everyone, Tom from the Airsoft Headquarters here and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna be doing a basic overview of the first half blowback introduced on the channel. And that is going to be from one of my favorite brands, from one of my favorite models, the Elite Force Glock 17 Gen 5 half blowback from Elite Force. Now, if anyone is unfamiliar with the half blowback concept, it is a cheaper alternative that allows beginner airsoft players a more gas conservative pistol system that'll allow them to play longer, have less overall issues, and just have a little bit more fun with the entire system. They're a little bit more basic, which means that they have less overall things to worry about. A great option for any type of beginner shooter or a beginner player. So the manufacturer of the half blowback series from Elite Force, Elite Force is the Glock license holder for Airsoft production. Um, they have KWC manufacture these. Anyone that is familiar with KWC is also the same manufacturer as the Elite Force 1911. Over the many years that Elite Force 1911s have been on the market, we've had an abundance of success as far as the longevity of those pistols and very highly recommended even currently on the market. The Elite Force 1911 is still a top five or top three recommendation for all secondary pistol suggestions. So the fact that these are coming from that same factory is a great testament to the amount of longevity that can come from these half blowbacks. So still a great recommendation. So for anyone looking to purchase or maybe even are interested in this, I'm gonna be doing a basic tip to butt overview. Uh, so anyone that does wanna know more information about the uh, functions and capabilities of this, we're gonna go over all of that in depth. Starting with the tip, we do have our mandatory orange tip as is required by US regulations. Now, I don't suggest removing this, one, for legal purposes, two, because in most cases, that orange tip is going to stabilize that inner barrel and produce a more consistent shot-to-shot -shot consistency for that BB flight path. So two reasons why I wouldn't recommend removing that orange tip, regardless of how gross some people think it looks. The other thing with the outer barrel is that these are not interchangeable. The half blowback design is going to be proprietary, uh, which means that you can't disassemble these uh, to change that barrel out because there's no other option on the market, and then you will not be able to reassemble these consistently. So another thing as to why these can be a little bit more cost effective. The slide, the barrel, and the spring guide rod are going to be metal in construction, which adds to the weight of their overall pistol. Towards the very tip here, we do have that uh, front iron sight post, which is metal. It is actually an extension of the slide itself. So for anyone that has real Glocks, the other airsoft Glocks, um, that maybe run the Glocks in and out of their holsters a little bit too much um, and start to wear away at that iron sight post, um, that is not going to be concerned with these guys. Uh, we do have the more modernized Gen 5 style of rear and front iron sight dot system on that rear and the front here, which the rear again is metal. Uh, so we have the nicer front and rear iron sight system, uh, consistency, so we have a much better time aligning those front and rears, um, so that they include that in this model, which I really like. The very top part of the slide here does have a small little cutout, so exactly how the full blowback model would look, this does open up, and you can, if you remove the magazine, you can look all the way through that pistol, um, but it, that they do cage it off inside of here so you can't stick your finger inside of there in order to get to anything. So they have that added inside of there. The slide does extend over that hop-up adjustment screw. Uh, so I would be very careful as far as making those adjustments, making sure you're not pulling that screw too far out. Otherwise, as that slide comes back, it'll catch the height of the screw and can start ripping and tearing at that. Um, so do be careful of that. On the side of the on the side of the slide, we do have the Glock license 17 Gen 5 made in Austria, 9 by 19 Parabellum, and we do have some serial numbers on the side here, a Glock logo, which the serial numbers are I they are uh, individualized they are an individual serial number. So that is pretty cool. I like that, that they 
went with the same individualized serial number between the full blowbacks and the half blowbacks. I think that's a very cool touch. Um, towards the rear of that slide, we do have your typical uh, back plate, which is not removable, not customizable. I know a lot of people do like those on their Airsoft and real Glocks. The frame is going to be the same polymer construction as is with the real ones. So you do have a more accurate weight distribution with that magazine removed. So it keeps everything more realistic, a little bit more immersive. Towards the front of that frame, we do have that single Picatinny slot for our more uh, consistent tactical Glock shooters. So if anyone is running any type of flashlight or laser sight, that is easily mountable. I have the Streamlight TLR1 that attaches to the slide or to the frame there. So very easy to take that on and off. And then I have the Olight Valkyrie. And that again can attach the exact same way as is uh, attachable for the real and the full blow black, bull blow back glocks. Say that a couple times fast. On the bottom of the slide, underneath where that flashlight would sit is going to be the mandatory external safety. It has to be a safety switch. The trigger safety doesn't count, so boo hoo. So when you do get these half blowback glocks, make sure you do find that safety switch. You take it to off before you try to start pulling away at that trigger. Uh, so make sure that you are doing things correctly. Speaking of safety, that trigger safety still functions. I know with other half blowback models that feature a trigger safety, most cases that trigger safety does not function. On these glocks specifically, if I am very careful to put my finger just on the body of the trigger, that trigger doesn't go all the way versus if I apply pressure to this trigger safety, it will go back and it will actuate. So you have two working functioning safeties underneath the frame there and on the trigger itself. Be aware of that. The body pins here um, are not designed to come apart via the consumer end. In manufacturing, they do add those for the half low back body. So don't start punching stuff out. If anyone that thinks that they can start uh, adding their own accessories on these half low backs. The other thing with the body is that the takedown lever does not work. Like I was saying before, the half low back is not designed to come apart. The entire function is that of the slide, the trigger, and the magazine release, well, and the safety. And those are literally the only things that are supposed to be operating and dis or, uh, functioning on the body of this pistol. Uh, the other thing is that the uh, slide release is not going to be ambidextrous. On the right hand side, we can pull that slide back and it can retain backwards. So if you run out of BBs, bam, 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 that will lock back, magazine out, slide a fresh one in, hit that slide release, and then you're back up. Um, but on the other side here, if you are ambidextrous, um, which there's no magazine release on this side here. So pull the magazine out, slide it back in. That doesn't do anything. Uh, so sorry for anyone that's gonna be left-handed or ambidextrous. Uh, that aspect of training is not going to function. With the Gen 5, stylized, uh, they do have that three dot iron sight system. Very nice and iron sight. Can't say enough about how much I prefer that over the drop in the bucket but we'll notice that the finger grooves on the front of the grip are non-existent now. Anything that's gonna be a Gen 4 or earlier does feature finger grooves. So on the Gen 5s, they went with a fingerless groove system, but they still feature the same square textured stippling on the left, right, front, and rear of the pistol itself. So we do have a very nice texture. I do prefer the Glock uh, stippling um, just because for me personally, I feel that that is one of the only stippling from a, a firearm manufacturer that actually does grip and hold in place other than Picatinny. Um, but that is what we have as far as the entire body of the pistol itself. The magazine here is a very basic uh, silver topped half blowback magazine. Um, we have uh, only available in CO2, so it takes a 12 gram CO2 canister inside of the body here. 
That is what propels the BBs out of the barrel and it operates the slide. From a single CO2 canister, we do get about 125 total shots, um, even uh, loading them up, firing as fast as we can, loading the magazine up, firing as fast as we can. We can only get about 125 average shots. Um, the magazine capacity is a little bit lower at around 14 shots, so it's not terrible. It's also not great, but for a beginner base of player, um, I think that is going to be more than enough. Uh, for anyone that has a half blowback uh, type of magazine, the cap system here is going to be a slightly different design. And that more has to do with how a half blowback functions. So for convenience and for educational purposes, we do have a half blowback Glock um, that has the slide disassembled. So this at this point, we cannot reattach that slide system. Once it's removed, it's removed. So it is stuck as is and it's for educational purposes. So we'll notice that as we pull that trigger back, it also actuates a hammer, which is what does the uh, gas release on the back of the magazine. But we'll also notice inside of that cage system, we have a little bar that moves back and forth in conjunction with that trigger. Interesting. But that is because when we insert the magazine, and if we zoom in closely here in post, as we insert that magazine, the bar that moves back and forth conveniently is positioned on the very top of the magazine. So as we pull that trigger, the bar on the trigger actually pushes a BB up into the chamber and that does it before the gas ha release hammer engages the magazine. So it's a multi-step firing system. And it's a, um, it's a double action essentially, so we have to pull the trigger in order to load the BB. And then from this point, gas is released, fires the BB, and we have to release the trigger all the way in order to load the BB. Anyone that is more attuned to firing full blowback or real Glocks will know that when you have your, your shot, uh, you can release the trigger partially in order to get that next shot. It's called riding the wall. So I don't have to release the trigger all the way. Actually, let me show you from this side. So the slide actuates, partway shot, partway shot, and then here's releasing the trigger all the way. We have a lot more travel. So we can do what is called riding the wall and we can get a faster shot uh, time so we can be faster on our on our shooting versus the half blowback because it has that double action feature we have to pull the trigger all the way we can't do a ride the wall system we have to completely release the trigger in order to pick up the bb next in the magazine um, that's one of the things that i don't particularly like about half blowbacks but again as a beginner shooter someone that's not super familiar with firearms, it's a good test bed, it's a good square one. Additional note with the more basic construction of the half blowback, that also means that the magazine is very cheap and inexpensive in design as well. So with full blowbacks, we do run the risk of damaging or breaking feed lips, maybe uh, O-rings start to go bad, um, release valves start to go bad. Um, and these are very expensive magazines. We tend to uh, care for these a lot more than maybe the pistol itself versus a half blowback. Because it's so basic in design, these magazines are stupid cheap, like dirt cheap. So you can rack multiple magazines on your person and you can just pull those out, insert the next one, pull that out, insert the next one, so on and so forth. Um, so you can collect more magazines at a lower price compared to the full blowback one. That is another advantage. More accessories, more readily available. Speaking of accessories, one of the things that you'd probably wanna hold a pistol in is maybe some of the holsters. Now being a licensed Glock model, these are going to be more accurately sized to the full blowback or even the real Glock system. So anyone that has a uh, hard Kydex holster or anything that is sized directly for uh, the Glocks, those can slide in and can lock in place very easily. Um, 
there may be a small little width size adjustments for anyone that is running the Blackhawk style of holsters. Um, that can be an issue for hat blowbacks. But in which case, you probably want the full blowback uh, for training purposes anyway. If maybe the cool cool guy uh, hard shell Kydex holsters are maybe a little too expensive, because they can be, you can pick up the Umarex Universal Adjustable um, hard shell holster. Now these guys are newly restocked here in our store for 44 smackaroos um, and even come with a belt mounting system. So a very good system overall to pick up. I mean, the one that I showed you is probably the most universal for the full blowbacks, but this still cost me around a hundred bucks and did not come with the um, mounting hardware. So that would be an additional purchase that you would need to pick up as well which I did include in that $100 price point. So be forewarned, we're talking 100 smackaroos versus 44. You know, it's a budget product, so maybe pick up some budget-oriented accessories as well. That is what we have as far as the overview of the external and the body of the Glock 17 Gen 5 half blowback. What we also did is we also went down to the Airsoft Arena and we conducted a accuracy test. We did three different distances. We did 25 feet, 50 feet, and 80 feet. We had a little bit of inconsistencies as far as that pop-up adjustment and as well as the fact that co2 is a higher pressure gas it still can over hop heavier weight bbs so we were utilizing 0.28s and with that hop-up adjustment we were trying to adjust the amount of pressure now even with a 2.8 um, and not a whole lot of pressure on that hop-up unit it was still over hopping 0.28s so we did have to make some small adjustments. We did have to bring that target physically closer, um, but the overall result of the accuracy is uh, with 0.28 at 25 feet, we had five total hits at one, two, three, four, five. I think at a total distance of six inches, uh, that's probably a very, very good size grouping, uh, especially with a half blowback where you have the entire length of the trigger to pull and engage, very good consistency. We went back to 50 feet and we have the slightly longer triangle. That's probably a distance of about 10 inches as far as the total length. Still a good overall consistency, again, with that full trigger pull. And it's a smooth ball, uh, uh, it's a small ball bearing that's going through a smooth bore, through a very short barrel at that, and especially like aiming for a center mass just for chest that's a very good consistent hit system now where this thing struggled unfortunately was at that 80 foot mark in total we took 15 total shots on this target which is a 16 inch by 16 inch target actually i think that's generous i think that's a one foot uh, 12 inch by 12 inch target uh, we'll double check thank you yeah, so 12 inch by 12 inch target. Um, 
took 15 total shots and impacted it once. And that was it right there at 80 feet. So at distance, you may suffer quite a bit, even in just a short little span of 30 feet. From 50 to 80, we saw a huge difference in spread. Uh, so this one is definitely going to be orientated more for a emergency backup, maybe for someone that's doing some type of reenactment, maybe it's a good showpiece to have uh, with the Glock 17 Gen 5. If you're doing some type of cosplay, role play, that'd be a cheap pickup option for some type of functionality to it as well. Um, otherwise, if you intend on being super close quarters, this would be a good option as well. That is what we have as far as the accuracy itself. Um, what we have in the box is, you know, the box itself, which it's a nice solid box, uh, very similar to what the full blowbacks are coming in. So well constructed and even has the individual serial number on the side here. Inside of the box is, of course, your pistol with the single magazine. We also have the instruction manual. Make sure you read this over and you check everything out. Um, the first release of Glock airsoft guns in the US was delayed a couple of months simply because they were finalizing what color to make the instruction manual. So make sure you read through this, um, give it some time. We also have the uh, product warranty information and we have a small little tool bag. On the inside of the tool bag, we have your hop up adjustment tool, the small little Allen screw here. We also have the CO2 insert and uh, release tool here. Now, the trick to inserting and releasing the CO2 inside the magazine is that this base plate slides off. So apply a little bit of pressure from the back and the whole base plate will slide forward and will remain locked in place. Take your tool, insert it, and then it twists clockwise or counterclockwise in order to apply pressure to the CO2 to puncture it or to release that CO2 canister. Very basic stuff. All things that the instruction manual is going over with you. I spoke on it briefly, but to bring it back to light, some of the other um, immediate accessories for the half blowback. Like I was saying, the cut and the size is going to be accurate to that of the full blowback or even the real Glock, which means your nice flashlights can lock into place like so. Now, this flashlight in particular is going to be the Streamlight TLR-1S, which is a firearm uh, flashlight. This guy was about 150 bucks, so relatively inexpensive compared to everything else real firearm flashlight. Um, it's also significantly brighter, that's why I pick it up. There are gonna be some cheaper options on the airsoft market similar to this, but are going to be uh, lower in light output as well as overall durable performance. You can also attach some of the uh, laser systems that you will find on the market that are pistol mountable. There is a little pistol grenade launcher attachment that can be mounted onto here. Um, if you wanted to be a meme, you can put a foregrip on here. That is attachable. Um, anything that's going to be a regular Picatinny mount system can mount onto here. So have some fun with it. Um, it is going to be specced accurately. So the final part of the video that I want to bring to your guys' attention is going to be the cleaning and maintenance of this pistol. Now it's going to be a little bit more difficult because this pistol doesn't disassemble like a full blowback would. Uh, so starting with the magazine, because that usually requires the most attention, is going to be taking silicone oil drops. Make sure you utilize 100% silicone oil. Everything else will not be as effective. And if you use real firearm oil, it will break down the parts and construction of your pistol and it will fall apart. So you've been warned. Taking silicone oil drops and insert, inserting it into the space where the magazine is going to puncture the CO2 canister, uh, making sure that that O-ring is going to be you know, well oiled and making sure it has good life to it is going to be very critical in making sure that these magazines don't fall apart. Now they're very inexpensive, so maybe you concern about that a little bit less. The thing with the pistol itself is the inner barrel could maybe gunk up with any type of debris. If it's a very rainy day, very humid, um, if you're crawling around through the forest or through the mud, 
you know, you can get stuff that goes inside of the actual barrel itself. Being a half blowback, there is a less um, material that can go into the interior of the barrel. So if you have any type of unjamming rod, more than likely there's a little loop to it that you can attach some type of cloth. Now the instruction manual suggests to apply silicone oil to that cloth. I don't suggest that because silicone oil is going to be a anti-abrasion material. How do you create hop-up? By having friction between the BB and the rubber of the hop-up. So once you apply some type of anti-abrasion like oil to that, you lose your hop-up system. So go in there several times with a dry cloth in order to pull out that, um, that mud, that dirt, whatever it may be in order to clean it out properly without possibly damaging with oil that hop up unit chamber and that's really it those are really the only two things that you will need to do in order to clean and maintain this pistol other than not dropping it into a swamp but that is all that i have for you guys that is the entire overview of the glock 17 gen 5 half blowback from elite force if you have any further questions put them down into the comment section below i will do my best to answer every single one of those but we're all done here so you guys take care stay safe stay positive and i'll see you in the next one take care